Okay, ready? Um, ugh. That's the first time they make Anybody on the set can make an arbitrary decision to cut me at any time, and they do it. You understand that? I can't Anybody just go cut, and I'm off the air. Shut uh, up. I can't imagine why. Me neither. Why don't you go get another uh, spray on tan, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the reality, speaking of. Uh, speaking of <laughs> I, I'm the reality Cancun, uh, the first reality movie opens Friday in theaters near you, created by the producer of The Real World. Let's take a look at this clip. All right, we're going to start this wet t shirt competition, so we're going to need some hot ladies up here. That girl's like 14 years old. Now, what do you guys think of this, okay? Well, I, I, for one, am excited about this movie because it's a lot easier to be the creepy old guy in the back of a theater than the creepy old guy at spring break. So, <laughs> I, uh, and we know what both of those feel like. Yes, we do, Colin. Uh, I really don't... I don't need to see the real Cancun. I'd like yeah. to see the real Hong Kong. Which <laughs> <laughs> is about it's a bunch of Chinese people Cancun. making scatological pornography and coughing into each other's faces. Say it. Well, say it so I can get 20 yeah. bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. He's not going to say, say it. the word. Say what? Exercise. I, we, no, yeah. SARS, stupid. Please. Say it. We had a bet. No, we had right. a bet that uh, SARS would be the first joke out of your mouth. No. <laughs> it's going to kill it in theaters. I mean, all these, you know, you get a bunch of kids that go, oh, you know, we went on spring break. As long as my daughters aren't in it, I don't care. You know. <laughs> they are in it, stupid. I mean, why wouldn't it do well? Uh, every type of reality programming yeah. has worked. I mean, everything, every, they're on real world like 19 now, yeah. right? So why wouldn't that movie work? <laughs> and it's also a question of the reason these movies are out is because now they're finally realizing everything on TV and movies, most of it stinks. It's written by dummies. And that, you know, even though reality TV may stink, it doesn't stink as bad as regular TV always does. Yes, it does. Well, everything, no, it does. No, it's it worse. Does. You know what's sad? That you actually, I know why you're defending real t regular TV, because you probably, your dumb manager probably told you, yeah. hey, you know, Jim, they're really noticing you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> and what you actually doing? think gonna, they're going to fly you out for some dumb yeah. meeting, and yeah. you know what? You're never going to be the lead on a yeah. show. They're oh. not going to build a sitcom around that. What's yeah. going to happen is... What's, <laughs> yes, they will. What's, what's, they will. They will, Colin. Come what's, on, stop it, stop it. it. They'll call it living inside a tequila bottle. Yeah. <laughs> that will be encouraging, though, because it's like, even if no matter how bad you do in this business, you can always get a job hosting a show on Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> The reason people want to watch reality programming is because uh, people are like me. I would much rather watch real people cry and have crises than people pretend to reenact some writer's idea of what a crisis yeah. is. You know, let's <laughs> real people go. But they're not no, showing just... real situations. They're showing uh, contrived situations. Joe Millionaire, that wasn't a real situation. It was, it was built so everybody could feel okay when they walked away. They're not showing reality. Yeah, but today. people well, got upset you know... and they cried and they had, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see people break down and lives get ruined. Now, wait a minute. It's all about reality. Now, amateur porn is reality, so people love amateur porn, yes? Yeah. Why do you love amateur, amateur porn? Do you like it better than regular porn? It makes you feel oh, like you, uh, you could possibly... Uh, what? It may <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it makes you feel like you could possibly oh. some uh come on. <laughs> it makes you feel like you could possibly be there right. yeah, you know. and then do it. Yeah. And yeah. you know what else? These are <clears throat> the we should support amateur <laughs> porn filmmakers. These are per people that are working outside of the studio system. And I think uh, <laughs> First of all, Agents. whoever made these cards does not know you guys, because one of the questions, do you ever go online to look at porno? <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get offline oh. when you're looking at porn? No. But now, you guys just, we want to talk about the vacation, because you guys had a vacation yeah. getaway, a nice family vacation. It was, it was a little reality TV, a little ugly American, a little Graham Greene type, you know? It was great. Comedy. It was Brazil. It was, it was, it was, it was, these guys went to Brazil, they just got back. Awful has that tan year round. It doesn't matter if he's, you know. Let me tell you something. Doing That's a one night in Teenack, he always yeah. has that tan. Uh, something wrong with his liver. You can see Jim. Yes, Jim can't. He's not allowed out in the sun. You know, he's, got a, he's got a combination of the powder disease and a couple of other things like the boy in the plastic. You got a picture? Thing. You got a picture on? We got some pictures of them uh, on their vacation. Yeah, uh, the kind of uh, artwork they were doing down there. You know. uh, oh, look at yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, the guys you see beautiful. Uh, Women there and uh, oh, there's oh, oh my God! Oh, uh, well, what do you think? That is uh, that.
Yeah, that's a... No, you're trying to... Uh, no, he was visiting... That's a, Yao, that's a Yao Ming uh, poster. You think, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you think Meryl Streep is a good Does actor, people, yeah. watch a whore or prostitute pretending he's good-looking. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Pretending he's in shape. I, I can't. I'm trying to put myself into the mind of a whore in Brazil and seeing you three guys walk in the door, and I don't know who I would go for. I mean, come on, I, it goes without saying. Look at that little mush right there. He, we were it's sitting. True. We were sitting. You actually the good-looking one. At least he's fine. At least. And, uh, listen, shut up, stupid. At least, at least, and stop trying to get on. Oh, oh, <laughs> at least, at least he's uh, packing you. Oh, you. <laughs> Wait, stop listen. buying Viagra over the counter there. Bro. <laughs> First of all, we were sitting, we're eating, right? We're eating, and I look at him and I go, "Be careful about the seafood. You might, you might get sick, right?" And then I realize he's going <laughs> on hookers in Brazil, <laughs> and, and, and I'm warning him about fish. Oh. <laughs> people. Did you, did no, you guys? Right. On that was... note, I would like to say we'll be right back, and I hope you appreciate the openness that these guys trusted you with just now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Patrice wants to say something. I'd like to say that that picture was a touch-up by Comedy Central. It was done earlier, and she was a model, and it oh. was all staged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a touch-up because they didn't make you look ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Boss you know going what? after your own culture. Uh, uh, finally, go left from your people. When now, what? Go ahead, boss. When we were in Brazil, after I was done with a beautiful prostitute who was a 10, <laughs> um, a 10, okay? A 10 in American I'm or a, Brazilian? A, 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 calm down. <laughs> All right, a headliner's talking now. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Now, I'm, I'm done with this beautiful hook. I'm laying in bed watching TV. This is true. And, and, and everything's dubbed in Portuguese. And Crocodile Dundee 2 is on. And his dumb little stupid par comes on. Not only do you stink in English, you stink in Portuguese, too. Okay? They hate you in more than one country. I'm telling you, it's horrible. Uh, 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 you sold that a lot better than it really was. But yeah, I'm telling you, hey, please. I'm going to overact that one a little Shut bit. Shut up, I'm a big act. <laughs> I can't only, I'm doing this with you only on this show he brags. Yeah. He brags like as if you know, he was a movie star. I'm with a prostitute. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like he's really scored. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. What type of oh, look, you know what we're going to talk about? Uh, Many wonder if, on, you know, they armed the pilots. Was there an armed pilot on you guys' flight? They don't announce we, uh, that. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I, I don't think they should have those drunks. <laughs> they should What's that? Those drunks. They, they're drunks, and they're ex-Vietnam vets, man. One little yeah. dude slipped and hit his head on the door, and he's turning around. Uh, five, yeah. <laughs> it, it, let me tell you, man. L.L. Airlines, they don't have hijackers because they check every car a, a mile away from the airport. So, it, it, see, America is confused with uh, freedom. Uh, losing freedom as losing yeah. convenience. We want to. We don't want to lose convenience. We don't mind losing freedom. We just don't want to get to the. We want to get to the airport on time. But they should just check every car a mile away from the airport. If you got a 12 noon flight, get there at well, that's 2 a.m. Like, that's what's good about pilots with guns. I mean, that is the last line. If a pilot has a gun, that that's it. I want them no, worried you know about flying. I want them worried about shooting somebody too. The, the power to think that they can shoot. When do they get yeah. to shoot? Well, when they think it's a hijacking. Well, well, first of all. I just I agree with you actually. Um, I think that they should absolutely arm all white pilots. Listen, <laughs> well, here, no. that's Listen. redundant. Listen. <laughs> Why even say white? Arm um, what? It's Chinese ones? Yeah. Also, a tape. There should be racial profiling at the airports. Whenever it's a terrorist attack in this world, you know who you think of what first. What show are you on? You don't yeah. go, oh, those Scottish are at it again. At the what? airport, what you know. He on? That was what? from the NBC calling question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. I didn't do that show. Don't talk to me. Now you're, you're trying to say that joke. Jokes. You're using no. this joke you wrote in December. You wrote no. that in December. Well, well you really smashed. annoyed me the fact that he was saying that racial profiling should be. And who do you think? You don't think you're going to be stopped, you little dirty looking Arab? You're going to be stopped. <laughs> It's true. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, little militia boy. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't bad. It wasn't stolen. It wasn't it funny. It was funny. He's starting to laugh. I All right. It. I don't it. Oh, oh. oh. And the other thing I hated, I have to be honest, everyone's disgusted me so far, including myself on this show, but was when Patrice goes, LL Airlines, like he's Mr. Sophisticated World Traveler. Well, Instead thing. of saying, shh. 
<laughs> instead of saying an Israeli airline, which I've been on, my, my agent told me that it's uh, a... <laughs> Look, Shut up and let the, the crowd laugh at my joke yeah, before you jump the boss. <laughs> All right, look. As you can... <laughs> yeah. oh, it's the end of the... It's the they end shouldn't of the give... Look at this. No look applause. at this idiot. Yeah. They should not give... <laughs> <laughs> he so needs a gun. Uh, uh, you just hate him because he looks like every guy at social services. They call from the back. They go, should we let him? No. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Nick DePaulo, Patrice, and I will respond to the message board. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> so good. You know, one thing we love is when you go online and tell us what you think about the show. Tough crowd viewers are not only the most opinionated bastards, they're also the worst spellers, all right? <laughs> I've been promising we're going to respond to some of these comments on the air. I thought I'd ask two of our most controversial panelists, Nick and Patrice, to join me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's start with Patrice. Patrice. This one is from one of your biggest fans, apparently. We're not allowed to say their stupid email names, oh. I guess. Um, I think Patrice stinks, and I don't like him. <laughs> Patrice uses the most overused white jokes. That's his entire act. It's not the fact that he uses them, but he steps on everyone else's punchlines to get to them. Oh, yeah, and he's fat. I know who that's from. <clears throat> well, look, he's, a, he's probably a quadriplegic. Typing, <laughs> <laughs> typing with a straw in his mouth. He is fat. <laughs> you jackass uh, <laughs> I have to uh, cut people off sometimes because sometimes I have to get my point out man so I can't let uh, stroke mouth in the Puerto Rican always <laughs> squeeze the knock knock jokes out give me a chance man Jesus Christ <laughs> okay here's the next one Patrice has two things Patrice has two things going for him in comedy this is what this one's from yeah cholesterol uh, and cancer no <laughs> Did you see him cover that? <laughs> Look, here's Patrice. Patrice has two things going for him in comedy. He's black and he's fat. He doesn't have to try very hard to come up with good material. If you're a fat, minority, gay, female, or handicapped, you should be a comic. Skinny, white, male comics are the funniest people out there, but political correctness holds us down. Amen. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Greg Rogel. This guy <laughs> got to be a hacky little white comic, of course. But you know what? I don't think it's Greg because he's Jewish. Uh, this is the work of a real solid Aryan. Uh, so it's these, one of these white boys who watches me in the back and wonders why I'm not bombing every night. Shut your face, stupid, and take the two stars Naomi Judd gave you, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nick, you're next. Hey, you got time for me? Thanks. Yes. Nick. <laughs> All right, this one's from some fan of yours. It says, Nick is a dumb Dago working class boar. His IQ is under 100. He's as funny as a urine-stained New York alley. Just by being alive, he makes fun of low-end white trash. What a travesty. <laughs> dumb Dago? Who the hell are you, Elliot Ness? <laughs> If you're going to use an Netflix slur, use something somebody other than Strom Thurmond's going to find funny. You know, what, what, what next, nincompoop? <laughs> and as far, as far as my IQ, it is under 100, but that's only because your sister swallowed 40 points of it last night. <laughs> and hold on. I'm not finished with you, you punk. <laughs> and as far as being funny as a urine-stained alley, who would know more about urine-stained alleys than someone who was conceived in one? <laughs> Good night. No. Here's another one. Nick DiPaolo, I even laughed at his jokes tonight. I finally saw some humility in him. Yep. And now I get his harsh jokes. I didn't get a good one. I finish it. Last week he seemed like a racist bigot to me. I'm glad to see he's not. So you finally found me funny, huh? It's amazing how much better my jokes work when your view isn't being blocked by a pair of 14-year-olds nuts. <laughs> As far as humility, humility doesn't make a comic funny. It's his point of view. You know, I want your laugh, not your vote. And as far as last week goes, maybe the only reason I seemed like a bigot was because you were watching the show while you were sitting on Spike Lee's lap. <laughs> P.S. Bigot is spelled with one G, you dumb Polak. <laughs> All right. I get too many to really, uh, you know, write, read them all, but here's one. Colin really... St needs to stop eating on the air. He looks like effing Jiminy Glick. <laughs> and then this other person writes back to that person, hey, either Colin eats on air or we don't, and we don't have to hear his incoherent rambling, 
or he doesn't eat on air, and we do have to listen to his incoherent <laughs> rambling. Look at this. I love that. Would you rather I spoke like this and just kind of gave you the joke and the punchline and be one of the comedians that laughs at his joke so that you get it? Is that the style you like, stupid? You can't follow individuals? What? That's one of the insults they said about me on the message board. They laugh at my jokes all the time. Is what? <laughs> what? They said I laugh at my own jokes all the time on that message board. Really? I hate that message board, man. God damn They it. said you laugh at your own jokes? But do you know what I'm talking about? First of all, do you know that I'm talking? But second of all, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm saying, everybody always complains, oh, comedy's uh, too hack. And then when you try to be your own self, whatever flaws you might have, then I get to listen to dummies like this who want a game show uh, host with blow-dried hair in a suit, standing there smiling at them with perfect teeth. <laughs> you mother... <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> well, wait a minute. That was John Stewart you just talked about. I really did get mad. Mm. That was Ken Over he's talking about. This is... <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from a guy for me. Just to show I've still got it. I drink his bath water. He could not be hotter. I'm not a fat chick either. I'm a bodybuilder who can't <laughs> wait till tough crowd comes on every night. Rock on, you sexy Irish bastard. You know what? <laughs> Listen, big guy. I'm a bit of an amateur bodybuilder myself. I've decided to throw you a bone. Here's a promo shot we decided not to use of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks, everybody. We do like, read the message board. like a gay bowling well, crowd. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. We'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, you know what the funny thing is? This is like one of my favorite shows right now and my favorite people. And I still feel like killing everybody on the panel right now. <laughs> I don't even know why. Maybe I'm just a hateful person or maybe you deserve death. I don't know. Think about it. Thanks to recent legislation, as of last Sunday, airline pilots are allowed to carry guns. So we asked our panelists, what other profession, profession would you give guns to and why? Ken? I haven't said this in many years. Can over! Oh, uh, thank you. I didn't know you felt that way about game show hosts, okay? Uh, uh, I think that shrinks should be armed. Not so much for their own protection, but for ours. You see, they are society's first line of defense. Every day they see problems that will never be solved. Years of Prozac and therapy don't come close to the healing power of a 38 slug carefully placed at the base of the skull. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Jim Norton. Um, I think stand-up comedians should be uh, allowed to be armed. This way, the uh, next time you're on stage and some <clears throat> jack-off in the audience answers his cell phone, or some irritating Long Island whore is just staring at you blankly, shoving buffalo wings into her fat face. <laughs> There's some guy with a bad mustache and dumpster breath comes up to you and goes, oh, here's one you can use in your act. You can just put the barrel of the gun into their mouth and blow their stupid brains all over the bar menu. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Patrice O'Neal. Uh, I uh, really think Jim Norton's T-cells should be given a gun. <laughs> <laughs> to help protect them from whatever virus he brought back from Brazil because a drug cocktail ain't gonna be enough. <laughs> also, Ken Over should be allowed to carry a gun for security against Matt Lara's attempt to have a murder so he can be the only one in show business with that awful haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like something that... <laughs> it looks like something that you use to start a fire when you're stuck on a desert island. Bridge <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, Jesus. Uh, you know what? I would give a gun to the host of the Oscars. Your acceptance speech is too long. See ya. When we know you're a womanizer and a drug abuser and you start off by thanking God, dead. All right? When you want to take a bulletproof car to the Oscars and your eyes look like golf balls, dead, okay? And most of all, when you use the Oscar forum to give your dumb, fat political views, dead. All right. All right that was... And do you, do you play a lot of golf without the L, stupid? <laughs> the, I would give... I would give golf balls. I say golf. Like, what? Yeah, I would give easy. It's my, oh, I would give guns to the McDonald's assistant managers. If you had to deal with every thug from your neighborhood trying to get a free fillet of fish, you ever stood in line at McDee's 
watching the abuse these employees have to take from everybody who's got five dollars and fifty cents. I got jumped by the straws and ketchups one day. There were two lines at McDonald's after midnight, the Bloods and the Crips. I had to get a 15-year-old kid in a Chiefs jersey to buy me my Happy Meal, okay? <laughs> two double cheese, one fries, and strawberry shake. Holla back. That's how they get the order. <laughs> because everybody has to have a strawberry shake. I don't know why. Now, I know, Patrice, we've had this argument. You say, well, white people go to McDonald's, too. But for you people, it's like cheers. You know everybody in the place. They all know your name. <laughs> like, yo, what's up, bro? How you doing? Yeah, you know. All right. That's it, folks. He, goes, he dismisses me like this. Uh, <laughs> Remember, items may have settled in the overhead compartments during the show. Oh, oh my God. Good for you.